वही डॉक्टर जी से बात की डॉक्टर दिनसो पारदी वाला से तो वही बोल रहे थे कि ये ओवरलोड का वो है कि का क्योंकि हमने अक्टूबर में जो है ट्रेनिंग स्टार्ट कर दी थी ऑफ सीजन तो काफ़ी हैवी ट्रेनिंग लगातार पाँच छः महीने चल रही थी तो तो काफ़ी शायद एल्बो पे और उस पर लोड आ गया था क्योंकि शोल्डर टाइट हो गया था और एल्बो पे लोड आने की वजह से तो वो बार 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 उसको मैं यूज़ कर रहा था तो उसके अंदर फिर वो लूज बॉडीज़ जो हैं तो तीन चार टुकड़े जो हड्डी के निकाले हैं डॉक्टर ने तो वो बन गए थे तो उस ओवरलोड की वजह से बता रहे हैं डॉक्टर कि आपका शोल्डर ऐसे टाइट हो गया था तो एल्बो का ज़्यादा यूज़ हो रहा था best part of three years ago now, not long after arriving in India when we were based in Bangalore and he came with another one of our track and field athletes, Tejas Vinh Shankar, mm -hmm. who was based out in the States. Um, so this is kind of one of my first exposures to the athletes that we were supporting at that point. Um, and at that point I would describe him, now in hindsight I would describe him as actually being very raw and speaking with his coach at that point, Gary Calvert, who had done a lot of work with him at that point, we. We basically came to an agreement that he is an athlete who has this innate quality to be able to throw the javelin. So ultimately his 86-48 junior world record came completely out of nowhere and it's generally 90% based off his natural ability just to launch the javelin. I think at that point he'd probably been throwing the javelin for potentially four years, um, which is like nothing, right? So I was saying to them at that point that, um, jokingly, that they were quite offensive to me because they were able to achieve these performances and I know guys at home that are javelin throwers who it took 12 years to get to like 75. <laughs> you know, and, and Neeraj is setting junior world records after three or four years of training. Neeraj is definitely a javelin thrower that is strong because he's a javelin thrower. But he's not the strongest javelin thrower. And he's young. And his technique remains uh, full under the production of power, for sure, because the javelin go because of power production. But the way he produced that power, he relied a lot on the flexibility uh, of his soft tissue, let's say joint and ligament and tunnel, and also on the overall fluidity of his movement, more than pure strength and pure power production through the muscle. So when you understand that, you understand that he is a, a lot about storing energy and releasing energy. It's very different than a pure uh, production of power through muscle. But this also uh, leads you to the understanding of the physiology. Muscle adaptation and ligament adaptation take different time. Ligament and tendon and joint take four to five more times to adapt. So, when you know that, you know that the way you're going to improve the power should be different for someone like Niraj and someone who will throw the jab in, let's say, just as an elbow extension. The way we understand this, obviously I am targeting strength, because we have to restore his strength before letting him uh, resume completely uh, jab in throw. But we didn't forget the ligament and tendon part, and that's, that's the nutrition part of the intervention, because he follow a very, very precise nutrition uh, according to the latest international recommendation. So in addition to a normal diet, which is already rich in calories and rich in protein, he also has some specific protein supplementation to help in the process, because if he is in a healing process. He has also creatine because some studies have shown that he can retain more, uh, more muscle mass and more power with that kind of supplementation. And he also has a specific supplementation in collagen peptides one hour before anything related to his elbow. So that way you, you have the peptides in your blood at the moment you move your elbow. What is very specific to joint is that joint don't have blood vessels, so you don't have blood in the joint. It's like a sponge. Only when you move, you feed your joint. So that way, we feed him one hour before so that everything is in his blood at the moment he drains. And you feed the joint 
during the rehab and training process. Specifically because we designed this just one hour. And this is prepared by the chef inside the cafeteria for him every time he goes to train. So we, and it is specifically for cartilage, ligament and tendon. So it's also to help his soft tissue to adapt. And we do, we, we think beyond the just muscle power. We try to, to think about the overall biomechanical system. Um, so yes, yeah, so this period here has been very stimulating because if I reflect back on what he was as an athlete, the best part of three years ago, it's entirely different. He's an entirely different individual and it's been developed through his experience of training abroad um, with a lot of support from Ishan's physio. Um, so he's matured as an individual and his aptitude for training has improved significantly. was 5% below the best performance of, of the year, which make him the sixth uh, javelin thrower in the world at that time. And he was 10 or 11% below the best performance, the world record. But he's 21. He's very young. And he's already throwing at 88 meters. So if you target a very small improvement, that can be accurate, that's something around 1 to 2% per year. In 2020, he will not grasp the, the goal, but 
in my opinion, who cares? Because it could be, Niraj could be the best javelin thrower in the world from 2024. And then from that, javelin throw is, is a mature sport. You can, you can throw very effectively a javelin above 30 years old. Yeah. Which means, with a good approach, Niraj could be at the top of the world during 10 years, 12 years, and then it would be a wonderful career. If you go too fast and you try to avoid physiological principle, then it could be a problem. Actually, every athlete, if we are going to play games, in big games, then everyone is hoping. Many people say it. And in the news, we are going to play a lot. बातें भी होती हैं मीडिया में भी और हमको भी करनी पड़ती है तो वो सब यही बोलते हैं कि आप कौन सा मेडल इस बार लेके आने वाले हो तो वो एक वो एक अपने अंदर से एक चिंता का लगा लो या प्रेशर वो चीज़ होती है लेकिन मैं एक ही बात सोचता हूँ जी कि हमने जो ट्रेनिंग की है वो हमने जिस चीज़ के लिए कि मान लो अभी मैं वर्ल्ड चैम्पियनशिप या ओलंपिक्स के लिए कर रहा हूँ तो हमने की है कि वहाँ पर अपना हंड्रेड दे अगर प्रेशर ले हम उस चीज़ को पूरा जो ट्रेनिंग है उसको नुकसान कर रहे हैं तो अच्छा अच्छी चीज़ नहीं है तो मैं कोशिश यही करता हूं कि अपने साथ ही कंपटीशन करो किसी का कुछ किसी से कोई मतलब ही नहीं है अगर हमने अपना बेस्ट ट्राई किया और अपना बेस्ट करते हैं चाहे वो कुछ सेंटीमीटर में भी आए तो ठीक है हम अपनी जगह ठीक है जी